So I just wanted to take a few minutes to unpack a couple smart triggers on the market today. First up, the Arsenal. Now if you've been keeping up with my videos, you have a sense of what it does and doesn't do. If you're new here, welcome. Essentially what the Arsenal is, is artificial intelligence that can mount to the hot shoe of your camera to maximize your composition every time. Now in reality what it is is a device that works with your aperture priority mode and camera to take out the fuzz and photos. Does a little bit more than that. We'll get to that in a bit. Now, new to this channel, we have the Pluto. This is a smart trigger as well, but in a different sense. It has 24 modes based off of sound, light, and by way of laser. Now, although the Arsenal only has a fraction of the features the Pluto does, it has the uh, ability to theoretically cut down post-processing time because it saves JPEGs of any stacks it runs, such as exposure bracketing, focus stacking, and more to come. The Arsenal has that smart mode, which will change your aperture, ISO, and shutter speed, whereas the Pluto is going to require a little bit more thinking and actual manual changes. Now, as I mentioned, they do share modes like HDR, time-lapse, and video, but the key difference is usability. I'd like to say the Pluto's interface is much more stable, consistent, and it feels more polished all around than the Arsenal's. That said, their HDR mode's a bit confusing in my opinion, and I think it'd just be a lot easier to work on camera, changing the settings by hand than it would be using either app. I mean, although some of these features feel a bit jumbled, overall the device works on a more consistent basis than the Arsenal, which honestly hasn't connected to my Sony in three days. I don't know why. It's having the same problem I had back in my Canon video. Hopefully we can sort this out and get back to work on it. Now to elaborate on the interface and usability point, the Arsenal still does not feel finished. I say that because we still don't have whole scene focus, video mode still is not available on it, and it seems like everything other than the smart mode will crash when I try to use it, such as the HDR and the focus stacking features. So to summarize, the Arsenal will actually work with your camera to figure out settings for each composition, whereas the Pluto is more or less a trigger that works off of sound, sight, and senses. As far as who needs what, the Pluto feels more like an actual trigger, and it'll work for things like lightning photography, splash photography with that little add-on you can buy, and it's highly customizable, works with your flash, any lights you have, and you can make your own things up with it. This would be good for people who want to keep the merit of photography in their hands. And the Arsenal might just be good for people who want to cut down post-processing time. They're looking to take better pictures, but they don't necessarily know how to use a camera. So the distinguishing traits between the two. This is like adding eyes and ears to your camera. This is like adding a tiny brain to your camera. Tiny. Like first generation iPhone Siri. Tiny. So to conclude, which do you buy? You on the phone, wake up. You do not need these things. These are merely supplements to your camera game and to rely on these will rob your image of something neither of these devices will ever have, the human touch. I mean, sure, these devices might help cut some corners in your workflow, maybe lower some noise in your image, but they won't line up an interest in composition or fix loose subject framing. That is your job. That said, I'd like to open discussions and debates in the comments, whether or not we need things like this. This is $175, supposed to go up in price to $250. This is $120. The other smart triggers are about $200. That's a lot of money. So let's learn from each other. Techniques, tutorials, and tech. Do we need this? I'd like to hear back. I'll continue to unpack features on these devices, as well as a host of many other ones. So in closing, yeah, we can be impressed by the newest tech, but do we really need it? Thank you for watching. I don't want to say goodbye, I'd rather say, let's discuss.